Salam jumpa kembali di Jejak Popo Channel Sahabat saat ribuan delegasi dari Mikronesia, Polynesia dan Melanesia berkumpul di Hawaii Untuk Festival Seni dan Budaya Pasifik ke-13 yang berlangsung pada 6-16 sampai Juni 2024 Fanaku mewawancarai dua orang aktivis Papua Barat yang menghadiri acara tersebut Dengan harapan dapat menarik perhatian pada perjuangan mereka melawan penindasan dan untuk pembebasan serta untuk menegaskan identitas mereka sebagai bangsa Malaysia dan Pasifik sebagaimana dikutip dalam laman Fanaku dua tokoh itu adalah Herman Wangai Direktur Eksekutif Pusat Hak Asasi Manusia Papua Barat dan Gerakan Persatuan Pembebasan untuk Papua Barat atau United Liberation Movement for West Papua dan Happy Daimboa anggota otoritas nasional Papua Barat. Dalam wawancara itu, mereka berbagi harapan mereka terhadap masyarakat Papua Barat dan harapan bahwa mereka dapat menemukan solidaritas dengan kelompok lain pada festival seni dan budaya Pasifik ke-13. Berikut petikan wawancaranya sebagaimana dipublikasikan dalam Fanaku Live. Aloha, aloha, Mahikai from West Papua. That's a Mahikai, uh, Melanesian uh, traditional language. That's a greetings from uh, my tribe language in Yapin Island, uh, West Melanesia, West Papua, Melanesia. Aloha, of course, here yeah, in uh, Hawaii because we've been here for a few days to attending the Pacific. Uh, culture and arts of festival today i'm like to talking about that what's happening in my country yeah, my name is herman uh, waingai i one of the west papua uh, melanesian leader so i'm here uh, representing uh, my people uh, struggle and my people story my people uh, voice as a united nation liberation movement uh, representative uh, head of the united liberation movement for west papua mission here in us but also uh, yeah canada and caribbean so i'm obviously representing the united liberation movement for west papua but of course i'm the former political prisoner of the West Papua, that place, that country, is still colonized by the Indonesian government. So this is the my yeah, uh, short introduction. Uh, so I will yeah, talk more about what's happening in, in West Papua and why I left uh, my country, uh, come to the U.S. Aloha. Some of you maybe still don't know, or maybe already know, because of the ongoing uh, yeah, political situation in my country, in West Papua. West Papua is a Melanesian nation, it's part of the Pacific region. West Papuan people, yeah, we are Melanesian, it's separate from the Indonesian uh, uh, people, they are considered they are as uh, ASEAN. Uh, we are Melanesian. Uh, yeah. Pacific uh, region is made up uh, for three um, ethnicity, uh, Polynesia, Macronesia, and Melanesia. So West Papua is a part of the Melanesian uh, region. Uh, but my people uh, uh, struggle or uh, West Papuan people, we've been struggled for so long because we've been uh, colonized uh, by the Indonesian government since 1963, uh, according to the, some of the international argument, uh, international uh, uh, agreement that uh, facilitated or mediated by the U.S. government and 
the United Nations uh, through the what they call the the Rome uh, Agreement and the New York Agreement. So the New York Agreement is basically is happened uh, during 1969 uh, during the time that uh, uh, the UN uh, give the full uh, yeah, chance to Indonesian government to administer or to mediate uh, what they call uh, the echo of free choice according to the uh, election uh, uh, Indonesian government uh, they believe that they can conduct the proper uh, election to ask the West Papuan people what they want but what we learn from the history that based on the New York agreement they should be happen like one man one vote yeah that's uh, according to the New York agreement but Indonesian government just uh, choose only 1025 uh, people out of the 800,000 indigenous Melanesian during that time and that's under the gunpoint Indonesian elected 1025 so that's why um, we learned that uh, during uh, the echo free choice or West Papua consider as a same referendum there's a face injustice uh, it's it's not um, help uh, my people uh, yeah, of wait eh, for their future so that's why today we are still colonized by Indonesian government because of that uh, election uh, the Indonesian government claimed that uh, West Papuan people a part of the uh, Indonesian government authority through the the election that they created and UN uh, recognized that but uh, we learned and I think UN also know that uh, notice that uh, injustice or the echo of free choice the echo of free choice is not uh, uh, it's not right huh? it's not right it's not uh, happen uh, according to the the article that regulated by the New York uh, agreement uh, on uh, 15 August 1969 however they have another agreement they call the Rome agreement so the Rome agreement is yeah coped with the the New York agreement so only one month later and uh, because of the Rome agreement also yeah, give the chance to Indonesian government to making more development to prepare the indigenous people of Melanism in West Papua to have their own freedom one day if they want it. Uh, so that's why according to the Rome agreement, Indonesian government just um, administer West Papuan land for only 25 years based on uh, the Rome agreement. Uh, the Rome agreement has happened uh, uh, during uh, that time in 1962 uh, on September 30, uh, 1962 between the the Indonesian government and the Netherlands uh, the Netherlands uh, so they have this agreement and mediate by the US government so they come up with the Rome agreement so let the West Papuans uh, ruled by the Indonesian government for 25 years so after 25 years let the West Papuan people they vote for the, what they want they still wanted to be part of Indonesia or West Papuan people wanted to be separate from the Indonesia so this is um, a little bit uh, yes uh, background uh, history that I mentioned uh, now because yeah myself uh, I argue uh, this when I was involved in West Papuan struggle in 1989. So my first uh, experience um, involved in West Papuan struggle since 1989. That's one year later after the West Papuan uh, people uh, we are declared like West Papua is Melanesian nation it's a part of the Pacific region so we are Melanesian we are not the Asian so according to the proclamation number 14 December 98 
uh, proclaimed by our uh, leader, uh, Dr. Tom Wainga, is an uh, American scholar, is indigenous West Papuan, but is a West Papuan uh, Melanesian leader, spent almost 25 years to prepare the West Papuan to be independent one day. So he written um, our own constitution, Melanesian constitution, and he also yeah, create the outline for the government system that we have one day to establish and separate from Indonesia. So Dr. Tom Wainga established uh, West Papua uh, country as a new nation. The, our country as a new born country in the Pacific one day as a Republic of West Melanesia. Oh, oh, according to that uh, proclamation on 14 December. So I was involved with the proclamation and organized uh, West Papuan students uh, activists because that time uh, as I was like young, uh, a young activist as a student activist. So working together with the other West Papuan students leader, uh, we organized the West Papuan students and West Papuan people to get involved with the a celebration for the one year anniversary after the proclamation of, of 14 December 98, 1988. So that time, yeah, many West Papuan people, because they recognize that we are Melanesian, we are different with the Indonesian, and we are West Papuan people, we have right to establish our country as a Melanesian government, as a Melanesian nation, as a... Uh, Melanesian country. Uh, so I involved with the movement during that time and yeah, we organized a peaceful protest because that's something that we do believe about the non-violent struggle. And I learned as I learned about that they are the part of the successful movement uh, like we learned from the Gandhi uh, non-violence uh, movement that happened uh, in India and also we learned from the Martin Luther yeah, uh, King Jr., this American uh, uh, civil rights movement here. Yeah. And also we learn from the Nelson Mandela uh, spends almost 27 years in prison. So that's why we learn from uh, Dr. Tom Wenga when first time he was arrested by the Indonesian government and Indonesian government uh, sentenced him for 20 years, spent time for 20 years. So after spend time in jail, the uh, Indonesian government kill him, uh, kill him, uh, kill him when he was in Indonesian prisons. So he was killed uh, by Indonesian authorities on March 12. So yeah, during that time, yeah, we West Papuan people, we are feel sad uh, because we lost eh, Nelson Mandela of West Papuan Indonesia. So all the news in Indonesia, the cafe and the tell the story the West Papuan people they lost the Nelson Mandela uh, during that time so yeah but yeah we we fight eh? uh, like you already yeah, and know that uh, West Papuan people we never give up we never give up and uh, myself I never give up even though like today when I share uh, my story uh, today uh, I've been involved in West Papuan struggle movement uh, it's almost 34 years now um, since 1989 and twice in Indonesian prison. So I have my own experience. So my yeah, first imprisonment in Indonesian uh, prison yeah, in 2000 when we organized a peaceful protest uh, within a university and we were arrested. So I was arrested together with the other West Papuan leaders. So three of us we were arrested by the Indonesian government because we celebrate our West Papuan uh, nation on 14 December 1988. Uh, we celebrate in within uh, Chandrawasi University. So we were arrested on 14 December in 2000. So the time I remember that it's not just myself but with the other West Papuan leader uh, late uh, Bapa Albert Kaliele and 
like uh, brother uh, Dolanik. There's uh, two others and names we spend time together in prison because Indonesian government uh, arrested them, including my dad. Uh, my dad, uh, my yeah, dear um, uh, father, uh, like uh, Sadra Kuwengai, he was arrested uh, as well. So my dad and I, both of us also were arrested and spent time in, in Indonesian prison uh, for almost yeah, four months. But yeah, that's the cost. There's a risk as a freedom fighter, as a West Papuan leader. We have a, a we have to take responsibility for our people, yeah, our struggle. So, yeah, spending time in jail is something that's a is a great uh, sacrifice for our people. But outside, we learn that our people they still fight because they do believe about their their own struggle. Huh? It's not just like. West Papuan struggle is not just only my my struggle, but this is the my people's struggle. So when the people they uh, continue fight, like uh, Uskup, uh, uh, yeah, what they call uh, Bishop Bello, uh, that's like in in uh, East Timor, uh, he defending the Istimurist people uh, to speak up about the truth, to speak up about the justice for towards the Istimurist. Uh, Istimurist, Istimo uh, people, they're also colony by the Indonesian government. They got the independence through the referendum. So we learned that, okay, from the Istimurist struggle, they got the international recognition. How about us as a West Papuan people? Uh, we do believe that one day we can yeah, get our recognition, international recognition. So that's very important when we are attending this uh, forum to tell the story, to say our story that our people's struggle is still continue to against the colonization that occupy our land. That's especially towards the Indonesian uh, government. Because if Indonesian government say that they are supporting the Palestine, uh, right? Uh, Palestine uh, people to get their self determination or independence. I about the West Papuan people in their own eyes. West Papuan people also have the similar right, like uh, what uh, we learn from the Palestine that Indonesian government I suppose. So this is the legal argument that Dr. Tong Wangai, our leader, argue with the Indonesian government during the Indonesian. Uh, 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 court system when we face the the judge uh, and I yeah, also face similar uh, situation when we we were arrested interrogated by the Indonesian authority and then we went to the Indonesian court and argue about our international legal argument argue about our people right in front of the Indonesian authority that this is our people right based on our non-violence resistance, based on our legal argument that West Papuan people, we are Melanesian. We have right uh, to be independent, similar like uh, Vanuatu, similar like Solomon Island, similar like uh, Papua New Guinea, uh, Fiji. Uh, yeah, and also, yeah, of course, uh, our brothers and sisters in Karnaki, in Karnak, they still uh, fight for their own rights. So we are West Papuan people. We have our own rights. So when we're talking about the Pacific region, so like I already mentioned, the Pacific region is made up three continents, yeah? uh, Melanesian, Polynesian, and Macronesia. West Papua is a part of the Melanesian mission. So that's uh, my story when first time I was arrested together with my dad. And then the second time I was arrested also in 2020, no, in 2002. Uh, so after, I attended the Pacific Island Forum in Fiji. Uh, so after I did lobbying uh, to uh, Pacific Island Forum's country during the time they hosted in uh, Suva in Fiji. So I attended the Pacific Island Forum with the other West Papuan delegation. So Indonesian government noticed that yeah, I helped to facilitate uh, the, the meeting in, in Fiji and we hosted the 
international press conference and then we call out to Pacific Island Forum to recognize the human rights crisis happening in West Papua. Human rights abuses is happening in, in, in West Papua. So at the time I remember that's when we organized the international conference here, yeah, uh, hosted by the Pacific uh, Resources Concern Center in Suva. They hosted the international media release and they asked me to uh, speak up about the current situation in West Papua at the time in 2002. So I explained to the Pacific Island Forum that human rights abuses, your brothers and sisters in West Papua, they face the Indonesian government atrocities at uh, that time in uh, 2002. So if Pacific Islands uh, Forum, uh, the member of the Pacific Islands country, they uh, continue to supporting uh, Indonesian government through the diplomatic uh, platform. That means go, you you give him the green light uh, to Pacific. Uh, I mean, the Pacific Islands uh, Forum. You give him the green light to Indonesian government to continue to to making or to killing the West Papuan people. And then yeah, that's something that I yeah, uh, yeah spoke up uh, very strong that time in 2002. And then after I left, I mean. I left the Fiji with the other West Papuan leader. We left the Fiji, go back to West Papua. I was arrested. Indonesian government waiting for me in, in West Papua. So when we organized more protests, I was arrested. Uh, so I remember I returned in November, November in 2002, when I returned to West Papua. And then, ne I mean, another month, like only between November and December, so we organized protests after the Pacific Island Forum and Indonesian government uh, arrested me for the second time. So they arrested me for the second time, but yeah, similar argument um, based on our legal argument and according to the UN uh, political and civil rights uh, 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 regulation that they always uh, talking about a lot at the UN level uh, for the political and civil rights like or regulate the political freedom that uh, have to yeah, happen to the people they are still fighting for their own freedom. So yeah, we continue. We argue with the Indonesian government. Okay, this is something that uh, Indonesian government, you cannot uh, ignore about uh, what's happening in West Papua. You have to recognize in, uh, our independent state. Uh, but yeah, we argue and then we were arrested and they spent time in jail uh, for two years. So. For my second terms, when I was uh, arrested, I spent time in Indonesian prison for uh, two years. But yeah, when we stay in prison, I hear the story, the cell that many West Papuan activists continue organize the protest, but they're being targeted by the Indonesian government. So, the life for us as a West Papuan activist, as a West Papuan leader, yeah, is risk. Uh, that's why when I was in prison and some of the, my colleagues, uh, yeah, maybe later on you can yeah, talk uh, a little bit. Uh, I mean, you can yeah, listen uh, direct to one of them our West Papuan community leader at the time, but because they also organized that's how the West Papuan uh, students, they come to visit me when I was in prison. So this is like after 20 years, and then I met him again here in, in, in uh, uh, Hawaii. So that's like my story in 20 years ago, he reconnect, reconnected with the, my yeah, colleagues and my friends that just travel around all the way from the West Papua. So they organized protests and West Papuan student activists, yeah, we yeah, call them as a Sona Mapa, uh, West Papuan uh, Students Union. That's a Sona Mapa. So they organized their peaceful protests on many of the young uh, West Papuan activists also was uh, arrested and targeted and Indonesian government interrogated them and then pulled with the yeah, gun for him, and yeah, but they continue fight. Even though Indonesian government released them, only interrogate them for a few hours, and then they release them. So they told me that Herman, uh, 
the news like the information they got like Herman when you release out from the prison your life is in danger so you cannot live in West Papua or organize more protests it's better you escape uh, because if not your life might be yeah yes similar experience like what happened to my uncle dear uncle Dr. Tom Wengai he was yeah, killed when he was in, in prison so the time I I, I yeah, here to my my friends, colleagues, uh, the advice and the chairman. We are all targeted by the Indonesian government if we continue. So, okay, we can taking the risk here, yeah, but you are a leader. You have to go to exile because it's important to bring the West Papuan struggle uh, message, peaceful message, non-violent resistance message, uh, freedom message, genocide message bring to the international community, bro to the international community, yeah. tell the people in international community that human rights abuses, the genocide is happening in, in my country, in West Papua. So that's why when, after I released out from the prison, uh, yeah, um, my dad is waiting for me because my dad, uh, he made the West Papua Melanesian traditional canoe. Uh, so we use the Melanesian traditional canoe, uh, Cross the open ocean, open ocean from the West Papua to the to Australia mainland. So if you read the 43 West Papua political refugees, uh, we left our country in 2006, and we crossed the open ocean, almost died in the middle of the ocean. But I don't want to mention that. But the story is. We left the West Papuan border, crossed the open ocean to Australia, create a diplomatic uh, problem between the Indonesian government and Australian government. And Indonesian government uh, withdrew the uh, embassy from the Australian mainland. And we argued that from the Indonesian uh, government president, the former president, uh, Honorable uh, Susilo Bambang Yudhoyono argue with the the former Prime Minister of Australia John Howard, and I'm in the middle, uh, so we argue, and I'm talking about the why we left uh, our West Papua, uh, asking for, I mean, demanding for the international recognition for the genocide because we made the the clear message in our Melanesian traditional can we made. Uh, one banner, the message uh, written on our canoe say, Save West Papua from the genocide. So that's why Indonesian government, he go mad about this, but yeah, this is part of the, the story, the, the truth, that's genocide, it's happening in West Papua. So after spend time in immigration detention center in Australia, and uh, yeah, through the international pressure and support, it come from the different uh, non-government organization in Australia. Australian government finally uh, recognized uh, yeah, my people uh, demand for the protection, uh, international protection for three years. So I got the protection visa for three years when I was in Australia. And I was yeah, able to travel after three years with the Australian travel document and that time in 2009 I I got the few invitation come from the US so I come to US for the first time attending uh, one of the international uh, conference uh, they're talking about the non-violence resistance so they invited different leaders non-violence leaders from the different countries so i was one of them and i come to us attending that uh, training workshop or conference they hosted uh, what they call uh, in massachusetts in in boston so organized by international center of non-violence uh, conflict uh, so after attending the meeting and then uh, yeah, George Mason University with Kapala 
professor there. Uh, they invited me to come to the George Mason University as a visiting scholar to yeah, give the lecture about uh, what's happening in uh, my people, uh, uh, country. And so yeah, I'm happy to uh, come uh, to U.S. as a visiting scholar. And yeah, since then, uh, in, since 2002, uh, 2000. Since 2012, uh, I come to U.S. as a visiting scholar, but also as a West Papuan leader. Uh, continue to do more lobbying, uh, representing our people at the United Nations uh, uh, platform, but also do more lobbying to U.S. Congress. Um, so this is also part of the my role now in exile. Uh, Hello. Uh, aloha. Uh, I'm uh, happy. I'm uh, happy that you are my uh, complete name. And, uh, I'm from West Papua. Uh, today, uh, I came here for participate in uh, FESPEC. Uh, because uh, uh, we are Melanesian and uh, we part of Pacific. Uh, I think uh, this aspect uh, we can talk and uh, discuss about uh, uh, all problem in uh, our country. Uh, maybe in your country, another country, the problem about uh, climate change and about. Uh, uh, gender and about, uh, but uh, today uh, uh, I want to say about uh, human abuses in West Papua and also uh, deforestation and also Indonesian occupation uh, and uh, 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 poverty uh, occur in West Papua. You know, uh, we have uh, history uh, very complete. A very very uh, uh, but today uh, I think uh, the the biggest problem is about uh, uh, human abuses today after Indonesian occupied West Papua a thousand of people they already died by Indonesian military uh, they came from uh, Indonesia and uh, military came and they shoot them. That's why uh, people go to uh, jungle. And uh, I think uh, uh, it's happened in all of West Papua. Uh, many uh, thousands of uh, refugees in there because they uh, afraid to uh, uh, shoot by Indonesian military and also uh, they are victim of the violation of. Uh, uh, military in there. Uh, that's why I think uh, this is uh, 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 the big problem. We should be uh, talk to our brothers and sisters in Melanesia, in uh, Polynesia, in Micronesia, and also some uh, uh, biggest country like America, New Zealand, and Australia. Uh, must be respect uh, the human uh, human right in there. I am a chief uh, also. Uh, Indonesian rape our land uh, because uh, they arranging the biggest uh, uh, business uh, in there. Uh, I think uh, uh, traditional people, uh, thousands of hectares of uh, their land is lost by Indonesian program uh, to uh, make the business big business in the top one. Uh, today, uh, our culture is lost, and uh, 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 Indonesian program to the population in West Papua it's uh, occurred occurred in uh, all West Papua. Uh, in a statistic of demographic, uh, in West Papua, uh, West Papua people uh, are very low, uh, and, and today uh, Indonesian people. They in a high level. Uh, 
I think uh, this is a problem for indigenous people in there. Um, and um, every time, every minute, West Papuan people, they uh, die. And uh, I think uh, if uh, some years in the future, maybe indigenous people, they will uh, lose or end, or end in their homeland. That's why I think uh, we need solidarity from our brothers and sisters in Pacific. Uh, uh, and uh, uh, Melanesian, Polynesian, and uh, Micronesian. Because uh, this is, uh, I think if uh, we can talk together, we can uh, discuss together to find solution, I think uh, we can uh, 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 I think maybe someday we can get the best solution to end of uh, all the problem in our uh, homeland. Uh, I think uh, maybe that's that. Thank you. In conclusion, for my yeah, story today, why we uh, come here? Because we would like to share our story as a West Papuan Melanesian, that West Papuan people is still struggle in our country. Representing a West Papuan people here to tell the story, that's hope from my people back home. Like you already hear from my colleagues, one of the West Papuan uh, uh, community organization a leader in West Papua representing the Melanesian uh, tribe leader Mr. Happy Daimbua after 20 years we last seen each other but we met again here in Hawaii so this is something that the aloha spirit uh, Pacific uh, spirit when we listen to the different country story when they give the testimony during the official uh, opening at the Una uh, University of Hawaii. They say, we are small island, but we have big heart. That's the message that we are West Papuan people also we would like to bring to uh, this uh, blessed island wonderful island and get connecting to our brothers and sisters here in, in the Pacific regions. Even though our land, my people uh, struggle in our own country, West Papua is still close to the international community. Indonesian government doesn't allow the international humanitarian group like Amnesty International, International Red Cross or Human Rights Watch to operate in West Papua. Indonesian government is still blocking all the international access. So West Papua alone is still close to the international community. We've been calling, demanding to the United Nations to make pressure to the Indonesian government to please allow West Papua to the international community. The current president, the current president uh, in the last terms uh, of Mr. Honorable Jokowi, when first time he was elected eight years ago, he promised to open up the West Papua to the international community. But after eight years, in the last his term as a president, the current president of Indonesia, West Papua is still clo close to the international community. So this is the 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 real. Uh, political uh, situation that West Papuan people we are faced. That's why when we are attending this meeting, 
ya we calling to the our brothers and sisters in West Papua ya during the official meeting uh, we ya yeah, yelling uh, very strong to the uh, all the audience that don't forget about the story the struggle of West Papua and ya yeah, we thanks God the Fijian government they mention about the West Papua uh, the political situation that we have faced uh, in our homeland even though Indonesian government uh, uh, closed the West Papua land to the international community but in our people experience when I receive uh, information as a West Papuan Human Rights Center here in US, we documenting a story that there is no freedom in West Papua. Freedom of assembly, we don't have it in West Papua. Our people, they don't have experience to have the freedom of assembly. Freedom of you know, speech, we don't have in West Papua. When people, they are organized peaceful protests or community garden, including pray in their own language, Indonesian government doesn't allow our people as a Melanesian indigenous people when their country is belong to them, but they don't have their experience. So when we say our story here, when we say our story with our brothers, and we join our brothers and sisters in the Pacific region to celebrate the culture, arts, is challenge us. And, but yeah, I do hope that um, through the international uh, gathering here, through the Festival Pacific Culture and Art, people they learn about the current situation in West Papua. And, join our people back home in West Papua to continue calling to the international community, calling to the United Nations, calling to the US government, calling to the Australian government, New Zealand government, to supporting our people's struggle and asking to Indonesian government to please allow the UN uh, High Commissioner to visit West Papua with their team. And also, our presence here, we argue to the Pacific Islands uh, Forum's leaders, Melanesian Spirit Group uh, leaders, to consider United Liberation Movement West Papua application to be member that West Papua is a part of the Melanesian uh, West Papua is a part of the Pacific brothers and sisters agenda so we are not just talking about the cultures or us but we are also to recognize that human rights abuses is happening right now in West Papua and West Papua is still close to uh, international community uh, towards our friends and colleagues here in US we already published our document a legal argument about the best solution for the ongoing conflict in West Papua we call the Washington solution so we presenting the paper to the state department to argue for the role of the U.S. government in the Pacific. So, we do hope that through our testimony, through our international solidarity, we can make the biggest change in West Papua. Because this is something that we all get together as a Pacific Islanders. Thank you. Aloha, my guy. God bless.